Hello friends, welcome to the heat transfer phenomena in polymer systems under the edges of polymer process engineering. Here we are going to discuss about the thermal properties of the various polymeric systems. Now before we go into the detail of this particular aspect, let us have a brief outlook that what we discussed in the previous lecture. In previous lecture, we discussed about the fundamental aspect of heat transfer, what are the different modes of heat transfer, how this heat transfer process carries out in different modes. Apart from this, we discussed heat capacity and modes of different heat transfer in which the conduction, convection, radiation, all these things we cover. Now, in this particular segment, we are going to discuss about the heat deflection temperature. We will discuss, discuss about the Vicat softening temperature, sometimes referred as uh, VSP. We'll elaborately discuss about the heat capacity, thermal expansion, thermal stresses, thermal shock, melting point, and glass transition. All these segments are extremely important to, when we discuss about uh, different aspects of the polymeric system, especially from the polymerization to the processing to develop the final product. Now let us discuss about the thermal properties, a brief outline I am going to present over here. These polymeric materials, they are important in everyday life because their versatile structural properties. I discussed in the very first chapter that the polymers are the integral part of our day to day affair, right from toothbrush to the linen to the medicine to all kind of commodity aspects. Polymers are become the imbe embedded in every aspect of our segments. So, they are because of they possess the, the versatile structural properties and now other than these properties, they do play an important role because of their physical properties. Now, prime physical properties uh, all these material possess like electrical properties, thermal properties, magnetic properties, optical properties. So, all these things you can see and by various kind of the treatment, we can impart the other properties. Now, here you see that these are the untreated polymers and when we treat with the several modification, then we can impart the various properties as per the requirement, as per the need. Now, the thermal properties of the polymeric materials, they are very diverse in nature. So, their use is in the different applications like electrical, morphological and all these things, you can modify all these polymeric structure with the help of the thermal properties. Now, these properties in polymeric system means their response towards the temperature change and how they react uh, when applied to heat. Now, as a solid material, uh, absorbs heat, its temperature rises with a slight increase in the dimension. Now, if you recall the first lecture when we told that these polymers are the, uh, composed of the various kind of the chains and these chains are also composed of the monomers and these chains are entangled in nature. So, once we supply the heat to these chains, then they try to unentangle and that is why these thermal properties of prime importance and awareness about these properties to develop the new product, to develop the product of desired properties is quite essential. So, that is why these thermal properties usually play a very vital role in evaluating the product performance processability characteristics in the polymers because every day right from the polymerization to the processability everywhere you cannot overlook importance of these thermal properties. Now, the thermal analytical methods they monitor differences in some sample property as the temperature increases or decreases between a sample as a function of added heat and these methods are usually applied in solid to characterize the materials. So, characterization, analysis, all these are very important aspect of this polymer property, uh, possessing the thermal properties. Now, thermal analysis usually when we talk about the thermal analysis, this is a branch of material science by which the physical, chemical and mechanical properties of the material are evaluated as a function of temperature. Now, this usual measurement provides the information of the physical phenomena such as phase transition absorption, adsorption and desorption as well as the chemical phenomena including the thermal decomposition and solid gas reactions. Now, here you see the different type of analysis which uh, are quite essential for the evaluation of uh, any polymer. One is the thermal gravimetric analysis 
and laser flash, laser flash analysis, dilatometry, dynamic mechanical analysis, thermomechanical mm -hmm. analysis, DSC or differential scanning calorimeter uh, tests, then differential thermal analysis, DTA. So all these are the thermal analytical methods. Now let us talk about the heat deflection temperature, HDT. This is an important property of the polymer. It gives an indication at what temperature material start to soften when exposed to the fixed load of uh, elevated temperature. Now, HDT or sometimes it is referred as the heat distortion temperature. This is a way to me measure the polymer's resistance or withstanding capacity towards the distortion at a given temperature. Now, experimentally, it is defined as the temperature at which the standard test bar of dimension 5 into 0.5 into 0.25 cubic inch deflects 0 0.010 inch under a stated load of either 66 or 264 psi. So, this is the standard definition. Now, what is the significance? Then somebody may ask that what is the significance of this HDT? These values are used to compare the elevated temperature but especially when we evaluate the performance of the material under load. Now, it is used as a screening and a ranking of uh, material for a short term heat resistance. Now, these HDT values do not represent the upper temperature limit to, for a specific material application and uh, the data are not intended for the use in design or predicting endurance at elevated temperature. Now, there are various test methods, standard test methods applicable like American Society for Testing Materials. They give so many standards for this HDT. Now, one of the test method is ASTM D648 ISO 75.1 and 75.2. Now, here you require some test specification or test specimen. It must be, it must possess the specified length, diameter on all these things. So, usually, the specimen carries 127 uh, millimeter that is usually 5 inch in length, 13 mm or half inch in depth by any width from 3 mm to 13 mm. Now, you prepare the test specimen, then it requires the conditioning. So, the condition requires a specified uh, temperature and a re uh, relative humidity. So, this is 23 plus minus 2 degrees Celsius and 50 plus minus 5 percent of relative humidity, not less than 40 hours prior to test. Now, two replicate specimens are used for each test so that the efficacy of the experiment can be evaluated. Now, this is the apparatus where you can have, you can determine the HDT. Now, usually um, this carries the oil bath, usually the depth gauge with a specified applied load and this is the thermometer. Usually the specimen support carries the metal support for the specimen of say uh, 100 uh, plus minus 2 mm. Then there is an immersion bath which is maintained at 0.455 mega Pascal plus uh, usually uh, 2.5 percent uh, plus minus or 1.82 mega Pascal 264 psi that is plus minus 2.5 percent and deflection measurement device and temperature measurement system. So, here this is that the temperature measurement system. Now, let us talk about the procedure. This uh, measure the width and the depth of each specimen and then positioning of the test specimen edge wise in this particular apparatus. Then the thermometric bulb you need to position and which is a very sensitive part for the temperature and you need to stir the liquid heat transfer medium thoroughly. So, this is the uh, heat transfer media and apply the load loaded rod to the specimen and lower the assembly into the bath. For, for this, you need to uh, calculate the depth ga gauge. Now, adjust the load to obtain the desired stress of say uh, 0.455 mega Pascal or 1.82 mega Pascal. So, um, you need to wait for 5 minutes after applying the load and the deflection measurement device to 0 or record its uh, stating position. Now, heat the liquid heat, um, liquid heat transfer medium at a rate of say 2.0 plus, um, point, uh, plus minus 2.2 degrees Celsius per minute. You need to record the temperature for the liquid heat transfer 
medium at which the specimen has deflected the specified amount at the specified fiber stress. Now, how we can calculate it? The weight of rod used to transfer the force on the test specimen is included as a part of the total load. So, therefore, the total load P can be calculated is equal to uh, P is equal to 2 S B D square over 3 L, where S is the maximum fiber stress in the specimen of 66 psi or 264 psi which is specified. This B is the width of the specimen, D is the depth of a specimen and L is the width of a span between the support usually 4 inch. Now, when we talk about the results, the bar of rectangular, now here you see this is a bar, a bar of rectangular cross section is tested in the edge wise position as a sim simple beam. Now, load applied at the center here uh, gives the maximum stress of uh, 66 or 264 psi and the specimen is immersed under load in a heat transfer media. This provided the means of raising the temperature in a graduation of 2.2 uh, or 1.98 graduation degree, uh, degree Celsius per minute. Now, the temperature of the medium is usually measured when the test bar has the deflection of 0.25 mm. Now, this temperature is recorded as the deflection temperature under the flexural load of the test specimen. So, there are various factors influencing in this aspect now edge over HDT. The HDT of soft or heat treatment specimen is usually lower than that of a strengthened specimen. Now, specimen thickness, it is again very important. It is directly proportional to the HDT because of the inherently low thermal conductivity of the plastic material. Higher the fiber stress or loading, lower the HDT. Another is the injection molded specimen tend to have a lower HDT than compression molded specimen. And uh, uh, usually it is said that the compression molded specimen are relatively stress free. Now, let us talk about the v EVSP, Viscart uh, softening point. Now, usually it is experimentally defined as a temperature at which a flat ended probe with 1 square millimeter cross section penetrates a plastic specimen of 0 0.04 inches. Now, what is the significance? So, once we calculate the data obtained by this test method, this can be used to compare the heat softening qualities of thermoplastic material. Now, this th test method is very useful in the area of quality control, development and characterization of various plastic materials. Again, um, question arises that what are the test methods and how do we condition the specimen for the same? Now, the test method is the ASTM D1525 or ISO 306 and uh, again for the test you need to prepare the specimen. So, the specimen shall be flat between the 3 and 6.5 mm thick and at least 10 by uh, 10, uh, 10 by 10 mm area or 10 mm in diameter. So, if you are taking the bar then it may be 10, 10 mm in bar. Then question arises uh, how do we condition it? So, usually 23 plus minus 2 degree Celsius temperature is maintained with the relative humidity of 55, 55, 45 to 55 percent and which is not less than for 40 hours. A minimum of two specimen usually shall be used to test each sample. Now, this is the softening point apparatus. Here you see that there is an immersion bath and uh, usually when we have the heat transfer media, then the, the specimen support and penetration measuring device uh, masses and the temperature measuring device and there are needles. So, what is the procedure? The procedure is first to prepare the immersion bath so that the temperature of the heat transfer media should be maintained between 20 and 23 degrees Celsius at the start of the test. Then the thing arises with respect to the place of a specimen which is at a room temperature on the specimen support and needle should not be nearer than 3 mm to the edge of the specimen and you need to gently lower the needle rod here. This is the 
needle rod without the extra mass so that the needle rests on the surface of the specimen and holds it in position. Now position uh, of the temperature measuring device, usually you need to maintain a proper positioning so that the sensing end is located within the 10 mm from where the load is applied to the surface of the specimen. Uh, then lower the assembly into the bath, apply the extra mass required to the increase uh, the load on the specimen. So uh, to say 10 plus minus 0.2 Newton or 50 plus minus 1 Newton if we are performing the second loading. After 5 minutes waiting period, set the penetration indicator to 0 and then start the temperature rise. Then gradually you need to record the temperature of the bath when the needle has penetrated 1 mm into the test specimen. So uh, this uh, Weikert softening temperature is expressed as the arithmetic mean of the temperature of the penetration of all specimen tested. Now, if uh, the range of penetration temperature for the individual test is exceeds 2 degrees Celsius, record the individual result and repeat the test using at least 2 new specimens. So, this particular thing is extremely important. Now, let us talk about the heat capacity. Solid materials, potential energy is stored in heat energy and the temperature of the sol uh, solid is measured, it is the potential energy. So, the external energy required to increase the temperature of the solid mass uh, known as the material's heat capacity and it is defined as its ability to absorb heat energy. So, the heat capacity, this measures the combined effect of mass and composition and usually it is denoted as C. This is a distinct from the specific heat capacity. This is measured of uh, the energy required to increase the temperature of an object by a given temperature interval. Now, heat capacity is an extensive property depend on the amount of material. Now, let us talk about uh, the atomic vibration. The atoms and ions that are bonded together with considerable interatomic forces, they are not in motionless. Due to the consistent vibration movement, they are permanently deviating from their equilibrium position. Now, here you see that these are the molecules and some, some of the rotations and collective behaviors. Now, atomic vibrations, they are in the form of a lattice wave or phonons. Now, faster molecules shrinking, slower ones, uh, the boundary in the elastic collision will increase the velocity of the slower ones and to decrease the velocity of the faster one. Uh, transferring, sometimes they need to transfer the energy from the higher temperature to the lower temperature reason. So, by this way, the vibrations takes place. Now, if we talk about uh, uh, the things in quantitatively aspect, the energy required to produce a unit rise in temperature for one mole of material. Now, here, you see that it is uh, referred as or the units of this heat capacity is generally referred as joule per mole Kelvin. Now, C is equal to dQ over dt where dQ is the energy input and T is the temperature change and usually they are denoted in Kelvin and joule per mole respectively. There are two ways to measure the heat capacity. One is the heat capacity at constant pressure. Another one is that heat capacity at constant volume. So, usually this heat, heat capacity is having the units of joule per mole Kelvin BTU over pounds mole Fahrenheit. Now, at low temperature, the vibrational heat contribution of heat capacity varies with the temperature and usually it follows the Cv is equal to At cube where A is a constant and T is temperature which is denoted in, uh, in Kelvin. So, this relation is not valid above a specified temperature known as dy temperature and the saturation value is approximately equal to 3R. Now, here you see that um, uh, different uh, materials um, having the specific heat capacities. So, this is a comparative chart where the material like polypropylene, they are having the, the heat capacity at constant pressure that is 1925 joule per kilogram Kelvin at room temperature and polyethylene 
1850. Now, if we talk about the ceramics, magnesium oxide 940 and aluminum oxide um, 775. Similarly, the metal aluminum they are having 900 and is still 486. So, this is a respective uh, heat capacity or, or Cp and this is in the form of increasing 1. Now, um, there may be certain question arises uh, in your mind that why this is Cp significantly higher for polymer in that particular table. The reason is that polymers are covalently bonded material and covalent bonds do not let atom exchange electrons like metallic bond do. There are uh, also the highest heat capacity values are found in linear and branched polymers because the secondary intermolecular bonds are weak and there is a minimum of cross-linking and minimum cross-link, this minimum cross-linking helps in increasing the expansion coefficient um, which ultimately increases the heat capacity of polymers. Um, another uh, question that may arise and uh, let us take one, uh, one numerical examination. Now, let us take uh, a numerical question that to what temperature would 10 pound of a brass specimen at 25 degrees Celsius be raised if 65 BTU, BTU stands for British Thermal Unit of heat is supplied. Uh, we, we asked to determine the temperature at which the 10 pound of brass initially at 25 degrees Celsius would be raised to 65 uh, BTU if heat supplied. Now, this is given because ultimately you require the Cp of the brass and which is given that uh, 375 joule per kilogram Kelvin. So, let us solve this particular problem. Now, this C is equal to dQ over dt, where C is equal to 1 upon m dQ over dt and delta T is equal to delta Q over m Cp. Now, this Cp is given to you. Now, this where delta Q is the amount of heat supplied and m is the mass of the specimen and Cp is always given to you. So, Cp is equal to 375 joule per kilogram Kelvin. 2.39 into 10 to the power minus 4 BTU upon and this comes out to be 0 0.080 BTU. Now, delta T is equal to 65 BTU which is given in the problem and 10 pound into 0 0.090 BTU which is 72.2 degree Fahrenheit. So, Tf is equal to initial plus delta T which is initially it is given that 77 degree Fahrenheit plus what we have calculated that is 72.2 degree Fahrenheit and which comes out to be 149.2 degree Fahrenheit and which is 65.1 degree Celsius and that is your desired answer. So, this is uh, one of the example that how you can calculate the things. Now, let us talk about the thermal expansion. Now, usually uh, material change in size when the temperature is changed and the measures the change in length per unit length of a material per unit change in the temperature. Now, if you see that initially uh, we are having a things at uh, say a specified temperature which is, which is Ti. Now, this is the initial length. Now, if you raise the temperature to say T final, then the, you, you may experience there is a change in the size. So, this is the final length and this is the initial length and obviously that uh, uh, the final temperature is greater than the initial temperature. So, mathematically 
if we talk about uh, the things, then the coefficient of a linear thermal expansion and this is referred as CLTE alpha, this is a between the temperature, initial temperature and the final temperature for a specimen of length say L naught at the reference temperature, usually it is given by alpha is equal to L2, that this is the final length minus initial length upon original length um, T into T2 minus T1, so delta L over L naught into delta T and usually it is represented as um, the, the Kelvin inverse or degree Celsius inverse. So, uh, what is the atomic perspective of this thermal expansion? So, the potential energy versus interatomic distances. So, the interatomic separation increases with the rise in the temperature while heating the interatomic separation increases from R naught to R1 and R2 so on. So, here this is uh, you, you can see with respect to the potential energy. Now, for the symmetric potential energy versus interatomic distance cover, there is no increase. You see that there is no increase in the uh, interatomic separation with rising the temperature. Now, what is the significance of this thermal expansion? This determines the rate at which the material expands as a function of a temperature and the higher the value of this coefficient, the more the material expands and contracts with the temperature change. So, this is extremely important because uh, during the polymer processing, the polymer experiences a lot of thermal stress because sometimes at a room temperature to the higher temperature of say 100 degrees Celsius and then cooling down. So, all these things and that is why this thermal expansion properties, uh, evaluation of these thermal expansion properties is extremely important. Now, this polymer tends to expand and contract anywhere from the 6 to 9 times more than the material that are metallic. Now, if you talk about the commodity plastic, then if you experience there are some, some region in India where the temperature varies from 2 degrees Celsius to 47 degrees Celsius. In that case, you need to evaluate and you need to be prefix all these aspect before carry out any kind of the processing of to a utility product. Now, the thermal expansion differences, difference develops internal stresses and stress concentration in the polymer which allows the premature failure to occur. Now, there are various uh, factors influencing and we will discuss about various test methods. The factor influencing the thermal expansion is substantially affected by the use of additives, especially fillers because during the processing of uh, the polymeric product, you need to add certain additives, fillers, dyes, chemicals, all these things and these play a very vital role. The weight percent of the loading is again very crucial for um, evaluating this thermal expansion and lower the uh, lowers the coefficient of thermal expansion which is attributed to the weight percent of the loading. Usually the test method applied is ASTM D69 and test specimen is usually 12.5 into 6.3 mm in length and 12.5 uh, into 10, uh, 3 mm in depth and 12.5 mm diameter. You need to carry out the conditioning which is around uh, carried out at around 23 degrees Celsius with the relative humidity of 50 percent and usually it should not be less than 40 hour prior to the test. Now, this is the apparatus being used for uh, uh, evaluation of the thermal expansion. It is a vitreous silica dilometer. The weight of the inner silica tube plus the measuring device reaction, it should not exert a stress more than 70 kilo Pascal on the specimen so that the specimen is not distorted or appreciably intended. Now, the control, you must possess the control temperature environment and uh, scale or caliper must be there and dial gauge. Here you see that this, this is the dial gauge and this means shall provide the steering of the bath and thermometer or thermocouple. Now, what is the procedure? Procedure is that the first to measure the length of a two condition specimen at room temperature, mount each specimen in a dilutometer, install the dilutometer in the 30 degree Celsius controlled environment and you must maintain the temperature in the bath in the range of minus 32 degree Celsius to um, 28 degree Celsius until the temperature of the specimen along the length is constant. Then you need to record the actual temperature and the measuring device reading. Now, change to the uh, 
plus 30 degrees Celsius so that the top of the specimen is at least 50 mm below the liquid level of the bath. Now you need to maintain the temperature of the bath in the range of 28 to 32 degrees Celsius and then you need to record the tem actual temperature. So the change to minus 30 degrees Celsius and repeat this above procedure because you see that from minus 30 to you are carrying out the temp to minus uh, 32 uh, to my, uh, plus 32 degrees Celsius. So by this there is a lot of variation in the temperature. Then you need to repeat the test until usually the two values are close to each other. Now here you see that the thermal expansion of the various materials in question usually represented by alpha. Now this uh, polypropylene this is having 145 to 180 uh, into 10 to the power minus 6 uh, um, Celsius inverse, then polyethylene 106 to 190, aluminum 23.6. So, you see that uh, the, the polymer possesses the higher degree of uh, thermal expansion. Then steel 12 and magnesium oxide 13.5 and aluminum oxide 7.6. Now, the polymer have a larger this thermal expansion values because of the weak secondary bonds. Now let us take up another example and uh, this example is that a copper wire of 15 meter long is cooled uh, from say 40 to minus 9 degree Celsius and how much change in the length will experience. Obviously you require the thermal expansion coefficient which is given that 17 into 10 to the power minus 6 degree Celsius inverse. Let us use, uh, let us use the formula delta L is equal to alpha L naught. L naught is the initial length of the copper wire which is 15 meter and delta T. Now here you see that we are changing the temperature from 40 to minus 9 degree Celsius. So, delta L is equal to 17 into 10 to the power minus 6. This is the alpha and length is initial length is 15 meter and temperature changing this is T2 and this is T1. So, minus 9 to 40 degrees Celsius. So, delta L comes out to be minus 1.25 into 10 to the power. Then it is comes out to be minus 12.5 mm. This is the answer. Let us talk about the thermal stress. This stress due to the change in temperature or due to temperature gradient, this is termed as a th thermal stress. Now, thermal stress is constrained body and this will be a compressive nature if it is heated or it is in vice versa. Now, engineering materials, we talked about various engineering materials in different lectures. The engineering materials, this can be tailored using the multi-phase constituents so that the overall material can show a zero thermal expansion effect. Now, this uh, thermal stress uh, is attributed to the restrained thermal expansion or contraction, the temperature gradient that lead to differential dimensional changes and this thermal stress is represented this particular uh, by this particular mathematical relation where E is the modulus of elasticity, alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion we talked about in previous slides and T naught and T is the initial and final temperature. So, delta T you can easily calculate. Now, let us take another example. A brass rod is to be used in an application requiring and to be held rigid. Now, if the rod is stress free at room temperature which is maintained at say 20 degrees Celsius, what is the maximum temperature to which the rod may be heated without exceeding a compressive stress of 172 mega Pascal? Now, you need to assume certain things and uh, you need to assume the modulus of elasticity is uh, 100 GPA for brass. Now, let us take up this example. Let us step 1. Now, this is your original condition where this is at maintenance T naught and initial length is L naught. Then another is assume 
अनकंस्ट्रेंड थर्मल एक्सपेंशन वेयर दिस इज हैविंग अ डेल्टा एल लेंथ चेंज दिस इज ओरिजिनल एल नॉट फ्रॉम हियर टू हियर एंड दिस इज डेल्टा एल नॉट हियर डेल्टा एल ओवर एल एट रूम is equal to and which is represented as alpha l tf minus t not final temperature minus t not this is at the final temperature now another step the compress specimen back to original length so small sigma which is l not and you see that this is the delta l which need to be compressed so is equal to minus delta l over l room is equal to epsilon thermal now based on this particular aspect let us talk about another step this is the fourth the thermal stress stress can be directly calculated as this is l not is equal to silent compress now this epsilon compress is equal to silent thermal so if we substitute this gives epsilon thermal which is equal to minus e alpha l t f minus t not and which is equal to e alpha l t not t f so the t f which is the final can be calculated as t not which is given as 20 degree celsius minus which is calculated as minus 172 mega pascal since in compression over e alpha l which is given as 100 gpa and this is given as 20 into 10 to the power minus 6 or degree celsius so if we calculate then this comes out to be 106 degree celsius which is your answer so let us talk about the thermal shocks if the dimensional changes in the material are not uniform that may lead to a fracture or a brittle material like ceramics it it is known as a thermal shock the capacity of a material to withstand thermal shock is usually defined as a thermal shock resistance or sometimes referred as a trs the thermal shock behavior is affected by various factors one is the thermal expansion coefficient a low value is desired obviously the thermal conductivity usually a high value is desired elastic modulus desired is the low value the fracture strength usually a high value is desired and a phase transformation now let us uh, uh, talk about this thermal uh, how this thermal shock occurs now this thermal shock occurs due to the non uniform heating or cooling now assume here you see that uh, this is a thin layer um, rod which is being heated or heated rod now if uh, we apply the rapid quenching then it may this this tries this particular layer which is in the direct contact tries to contract during the cooling however the heated segment 
they try to resist the contraction. So, therefore, a tension develops at the surface and which is represented as small sigma is equal to E alpha T1 minus T2. So, this is the T1 and T2. So, T2 is the, the cooling uh, temperature at the cooled surface and T1 is the uh, temperature at the um, surface which is maintained at the higher range. Now, this temperature difference that can be produced by cooling it is T1 minus T2 is this is equal to the quench rate over K. Now, this is the critical temperature difference for fracture which is usually set as as alpha is equal to alpha final and T1 minus T2 that is a fracture can be calculated by this small sigma f over E alpha L. Now, the quench rate for the fracture that is a thermal shock resistance is directly proportional to the uh, small sigma f k over E alpha L. Now, the larger TSR this is thermal shock resistance when alpha, small sigma f k E alpha L is large where small sigma is the thermal stress of on the fracture, k is the thermal conductivity. E is the modulus of elasticity and this is the thermal expansion. So, dear friends, here we discussed about uh, the various phenomena of uh, uh, heat transfer, especially related to the thermal expansion, contraction, all these things. For your convenience, we have enlisted couple of references. You can utilize those references for further studies. Thank you very much.